All right, guys, I'm in the garden, and guess what? It's happening. I'm so excited. We have so many cucumbers coming in. We've got melons coming in. You are staring at a future pickle right there. There's just so many, so many. Little updated garden tour, you guys. Um, the beds are just taking off like crazy. I pruned the strawberries and they're starting to produce more. So if you're starting to see a lot of um, this right here, the discoloration and stuff, just pop those off and then it will encourage more growth. There's really too many strawberries for this little container and eventually I will transplant them somewhere else. The tomatoes are doing amazing. I mean, there's just tomatoes and more tomatoes and more tomatoes and more blooms. This one I'm really excited about. I think this is either and I'm probably not saying this right, but Costelludo Genovese or their mushroom baskets. But look at all the like ribbing in that. I just think these are so neat. I haven't grown them before, so I'm pretty excited about those. Y'all, the squash and zucchini, they are taking off. And I've been really proactive with the squash vine borers. I'm hoping that we're gonna get to enjoy a lot of these. And this is a buttercup or butternut squash. Um, the main stem when I transplanted this just would not, it wasn't doing well. So I cut it off and the secondary stems took off. So that just goes to show you, um, if, if you see your plant really struggling and it has more than one stem, try cutting off the weakest stem, the one that's not doing well, and see if that doesn't make a difference because obviously now it's growing like crazy. And, uh, yeah, this bed's looking pretty good. Uh-oh. Well, this one's probably not gonna make it. You guys see that right there? So I'm gonna have to pull this one out. If this will focus, I'll show you. I just pulled the stem off. See that? Okay, so I'm actually going to pull this out. There's too much damage for this to make it. And it's too small. If this is a bigger plant, it probably could survive um, me removing the boar, but this one's obviously too small. So I'm about to feed him to the chickens. Right there, whoop, that's a squash vine boar. That is your squash and zucchini's worst enemy. Nice. Because I mean, it really was getting overshadowed by the huge leaves on these other ones. So I'm not too worried about it. Plus I just did a succession planting um, of a ton of stuff today. In this bed I have Heath's peppers, which has really stopped producing besides this one. I'm not really sure what's going on. Hopefully it's gonna start doing something um, and then I have a yellow bell pepper here and then this is a transplanted cucumber from my green stock and it's producing which is super exciting and then over here I believe these are the Kajari melons you see oh no that's not it right here there we go lots of little melons on here it's actually doing pretty good it's starting to climb up over the uh, trellis and this is a transplanted cucumber I've got a couple of marigolds growing in, and then this is more melons, more mini melons. Goodness, chickens. Um, I can't remember which one this is, but it's beautiful. I've got a big one in here somewhere. Ah, here's one. Ah, there it is right there. I do believe that that is a mango melon, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't have it labeled. There were some really sad looking vines on there because I transplanted it and they did horrible. So I clipped the main vines and this is the secondary little vines that have just taken off and are fruiting like crazy, which is extremely gratifying. The berry's doing good. We've got a pest right there. Boop. All right, got it. Here are Lucia's tomatoes, which there's already, we've had harvest on these already. Um, we've had a couple of really huge caterpillars going after these, but they've been chicken food. Um, the okra getting pretty big. I just planted some more of that today. So there's that bed. Okay, and then over here, this is the Brad's, or no, Barry's Crazy Cherry. I always say that. Guys, 
Look at the clusters. It's going crazy. I love this one because it just makes a bazillion little yellow tomatoes. And then the other ones. These are the ones that were in those red solo cups that were looking kind of sad. Oh, look at that. Caterpillar poop. He's here somewhere. Okay, guys. This is a tomato hornworm. And I'm going to feed him to the chickens. But I wanted to show you something. One of the ways that you can tell if that's what's causing your damage is... Let me see this little focus. Do you see the blunt end on this tomato plant? It looks like I pinched off the end of it. That is how they eat it. They'll start leaving just blunt ends. You'll see like stems that look like this. Like I had come in and just pinched it off. But really, it's that this guy is coming in and eating everything. He'll eat the tomato, the stem, everything. Looking for that blunt end. Um, and also the poo, like I showed. Like look, he, he'd been eating on this. You see? Fiddle focus. Guys, I'm having so many issues with this focusing today. It's making me really mad. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and break him off. There's a good view of him. Again, if it will focus. And he's going to go say bye-bye to the chickens. Say goodbye, worm. Get him. Get him, girl. Eat him. check and make sure there's not any more um, one trick you can do if you're like having a really hard time finding them is get a black light um, a lot of people will do that and try to find where they've been um, I haven't done the black light so I can't tell you what that looks like but I've heard people say that that's a really good way to find them the poop to me if you start seeing droppings start looking everywhere start seeing poop Look for worms, caterpillars. And we've got my crazy Texas tomatoes that have gotten really big. Um, hopefully, we'll be harvesting some of these soon. This one seems to stop or seem to have stopped growing. But I've got little new ones in there. And then behind that is the melon bed and the zucchini bed that we planted out. And we've got zucchinis and squash. And the watermelons are taking off, which is awesome. We have a few strawberries there at the end. So this is the newest bed, and it's doing really well. We still have to take out that tree that fell. There's just been so much to do. As you guys, there's an update on the garden beds. They're filling in and we actually have a lot of work to do in terms of getting the uh, the other beds taken care of over here so that we can plant them out. I just started a bunch of seeds. Stock is doing beautifully. I'm about to plant out some more things in here. Lucia started some dwarf tomatoes to put in here and uh, yeah, the beans look pretty sunburnt, but I'm still getting some off of it. And then my little dwarf tomatoes are doing pretty good. Guys, um, I don't know if you can tell by the sweat on my face, but it's really humid here. It's definitely not as hot as in Texas, but good night. The humidity here makes it feel like it's as hot. Um, I'm not sure if I prefer the dry heat, like the higher temps, or the humidity and the slightly lower temps but it's still oh yeah pretty honey it's still getting slightly cooler at night which is nice but man that humidity hey guys it's actually the next day i like to come out in the mornings and i check for bugs and stuff it's really good that i did because i just found tomato hornworms on lucia's tomatoes so i'm actually having to scour her entire patch i just found two tomato hornworms on Lucia's tomatoes, so I'm about to feed those to the chickens. Man, I just found a third, and now I'm starting to think there could be more. That makes number four. That makes number six. I think I must have miscounted. I thought I had six, but I'm only seeing five in my little pile. But look at this, guys. Do you see all of their little, look like little grenades? Oh, their poop. Look at the damage that they've done this tomato plant. You see how, like, just they just clean ate it. So, and, uh, you know, I don't know how many are in here, but the, whatever moth makes or lays those eggs must have come and laid them in here. He's number six, and he's pretty big, too. Excuse my garden fingers, but then I just found this guy. He's going straight to the chickens. Number seven. 
again, what I'm doing is I'm following the poop. Big guy. There's another one. Also finding aphids. We just need to do some serious pruning in here. And obviously, I need to get rid of all of those tomato hornworms over there. Here is number eight. Guys, that's insane. Eight of them. Yep. Enjoy your last few bites, guys. And nine. Um, I'm not sure if these are indeterminate or determinate tomatoes. And what that means is indeterminate will just keep making and producing more and more tomatoes um, under the right conditions. A determinate has a set number of tomatoes that it's going to make. And then after that, um, it's not going to make any more. So I don't know if these are indeterminate or determinate. But what I'm doing right now is I am pruning them really heavily, especially underneath because those bottom leaves are really not doing anything they're not photosynthesizing as much as the top leaves they don't need to be there all they're doing is staying really close to the dirt and probably staying you know maintaining their moisture for a lot longer so I'm going to prune all of those and I just saw this fat guy I'm about to take him off um, I'm gonna try to not prune any of the stems unless it's like really bad because I don't know if it's a determinate or indeterminate. So when you're pruning a determinate, meaning it's got a set number, you don't want to prune these. You want to stick with the leaves and make sure there's none of none of these going on. Something I would also really suggest doing is when you have tomatoes that are starting to turn, and what I mean is like they're just starting to not be green anymore, they're getting some yellow and some red in them. Um, if you're having issues with tomato hornworms or caterpillars or any kind of pest, pick them. They will ripen on the counter because if you don't, this is what happens. And you can see that this one had started to turn. So I'm popping all of the ones off that are starting to turn now to save them from getting eaten if I miss, you know, some hornworms or some fatties. That's what I'm going to call those big fat caterpillars. So yeah, that's another tip. And here is number 10. Picked the, uh, the tomatoes and stuff that they had just putting holes in and stuff. And I'm going to go feed all of these, all 10 of them, to my chickens. I'm really hoping I didn't miss any. It looks a lot more bare, but I needed to take out a lot of um, leaves that we're browning and starting to be sickly. Bugs tend to go for unhealthy plants uh, over the healthy plant. So sometimes you can actually leave like a sacrificial plant, like one that's not doing very well and you just leave it because the bugs will want to go to that one first. I wanted to go ahead and take care of all of the sickly leaves and get all these hornworms off and hopefully these tomatoes will bounce back now. They have enough leaves to still photosynthesize. I've noticed that um, the green stock garden is where I have my dwarf tomatoes and that's where uh, Lucia and I are planting her next round of tomatoes because in this bed they're so low to the soil it's a lot harder to water them like you have to be really you get close you know make sure not to get the tops of the leaves whereas my bigger ones you know they're naked at the bottom so it's not not very hard to miss the leaves in the green stock you water from the top so you're not dealing with water constantly hitting the leaves and they're able to soak it up from the soil. If you want a green stock, you can go to their website and use code LOOMP and you'll get uh, $10 off. That's capital, all caps, L-O-O-M-F. Okay, so that's it for me this morning in the garden. If you've got a garden, make sure you get out every morning and tend to it. It's not a set it and forget it thing like I've said before. Um, the best friend for the garden is the gardener. With that, shalom. I'll see you guys next time. If you could please share this video, like and comment. I am so close to hitting that thousand mark. I only need like 400 something more subscribers and it would really be an amazing blessing to us if we could get our channel monetized. 
So if you could be a part of helping this channel grow, I would so appreciate it. Thank you.